we're moving into the beginning of a long-term project. Uh, we'll explore, assemble and test a water treatment system that controls salinity and temperature. Our working fish tank model uh, has many characteristics that are similar to other systems across different disciplines. The concepts and methods are transferable to these systems. Uh, examples include water treatment systems in civil engineering, medical applications, chemical engineering process control systems, and many applications in manufacturing processes. This portion of our work will explore the mechanical elements of the system. The pumping of water or fluids is a cross-disciplinary item. The design of pumps to efficiently move water combines the application of an electrical motor to drive pumps. Our classroom experiences will include learning about using calipers and measurements, uh, applying measurements to 3D design of pump parts, uh, learning how to take key electrical measurements to measure energy and power, collecting data on pump characteristics for efficiency and flow rate versus head height. These experiences will help during subsequent activities later in the project. All right, let's do a quick overview of what we'll be uh, covering in this section of our presentation. Uh, the topics for the first portion of our work are going to include the fish tank system overview, uh, pump applications and types of pumps, uh, pump measurements using calipers, 3D drawings, uh, specifically we'll be using SketchUp, and we'll discuss a little bit about geometric dimensioning and tolerancing and how that influences design and manufacturing. And finally, our 3D printing uh, that we'll be applying to this course. All right, this diagram helps us take a look at the fish tank system that we'll be exploring. Um, we're going to work through the parts of the fish tank control system. Uh, the system applies several science and engineering concepts and offers a good opportunity to investigate each. Included in that are pump operations and efficiency, uh, electrical circuits and power requirements, heating and temperature control of a fluid, uh, mass balancing or salinity in this case, and control, and then finally uh, overall system programming and control. First, we'll investigate some design and energy conversion topics. Uh, our electric fountain pump converts electrical energy into rotational energy. Um, characterizing how this pump works is the goal of our uh, activities. Uh, how do we show its ability to move water? How efficient is this system at moving water? Um, the impeller in its design is a key element to its performance. It converts the rotational mechanical energy into a kinetic and potential ener energy that's been added to the water. The questions we might have are, can students improve the performance of the pump? How do we decide what is a better design? So the, let's go ahead and move on and take a look at a few other applications for pumps and reinforce that these exercises are relevant to all engineering disciplines. Water quality is a worldwide concern and it's made the top list for the grand challenges in engineering. Upgrades to water treatment systems and changes happen regularly. The pumps and other movement technologies applied in these systems are varied. Moving liquids, semi-solids, and solids are often necessary. The control systems have become more complex and use a variety of sensors and treatment technologies. This diagram provides an overview of the pretreatment, primary treatment, and secondary treatment of a typical water treatment facility. Included in these processes are systems for settling out solids, removing trash, aeration technologies for mixing and removing other matter from the stream, a variety of primary and secondary treatment methods are applied to chemically or otherwise treat the water in preparation for delivery to the community. These, the handling of the waste also adds complexity to the system. The sludge must be treated and disposed of, sometimes sold as fertilizer. Uh, residual gases can be captured and used in electrical generation systems to return energy to the facility. There are some great animations and videos of a wide variety of pumping systems. 
This life-saving artificial kidney applies a peristaltic pumping configuration, unique for its ability to maintain the integrity of the flow without adding contamination. This type of pump can also be used for dispensing soda and juices in self-serve machines. Controlling chemical processes, both large and small, like that one shown here, requires clear understanding of pumping equipment and its abilities. Chemical metering requires that the performance of the pumping systems be precisely controlled to provide accurate addition of materials. This system of tank, pumps, and valves demonstrates the need for backup pumping systems to maintain facility operation. Each of the three pumps shown can be configured to draw from either tank and provide material to the destination. Understanding the characteristics and reliability of pumping systems is often vital to system performance. This model of a nuclear steam plant shows three closed loop systems, each operating a pump. A pump on the primary loop for moving the coolant through the reactor. The steam generator requires a pump to return the condensed steam back to the generator. An additional pump is used to move fluid that contributes to condensing the steam. Each has a different environment and surrounding system within which it needs to work. Let's discuss the three primary types of pumps. Uh, the first image here is a positive displacement pump. In general, a positive dis displacement pump traps and moves a fixed volume of liquid. This rope pump is interesting because it uses the piston concept. Each of the rope has separate pistons um, attached to it and as the rope runs below the water line down here it captures water and it brings it up under, inside the rising pipe. As the water is trapped by the piston it carries is carried up and when finally when the water vents near the spill pipe it runs out and gets captured in the bucket. This cycle of trapping and moving water is, is common and there are many other examples of positive displacement pumps. Let's discuss an impulse pump. This is a unique one to discuss. It's a cycle of pressure accumula accumulation and discharge that creates the force needed to lift water from the source. This is a pulsar pump and it uses the turbulent air that gets caught in water and traps it underground and causes the water level to change. As the water level changes and the air accumulates in there, it produces pressure and causes water to move up the pipe. As the volume increases in the below ground cavity, it finally vents and allows air to drop into the pipe as well. This creates a pulsing action and allows water to be raised much higher than it would normally allow, be allowed to raise. The final pump is a velocity pump, and this is what we'll be working with. The velocity pumps adds energy to the fluid, increasing its kinetic energy, um, and allows it to gain potential energy by moving it up in height. Again, this is a centrifugal pump. Uh, it's one of the most common. Uh, the impellers rotate. The impellers rotate around, um, changing the pressure in the water um, as the water moves out the discharge side, it creates suction and draws water in the face of the pump. And so this is a, again a centrifugal pump that we'll be working with in class. Let's discuss a few details of the centrifugal pump design. The impeller and the volute have the greatest influence on performance. Uh, the impeller's rotating speed, diameter, and veins are key to moving the water through the pump. The volute, uh, the shape of the throat and the tongue clearance shown in this image uh, are also important. They affect the efficiency and the frictional and, and mechanical other mechanical losses. Um, a key observation here is the angle and curved veins or fins is often misinterpreted. In both the images shown, the impeller is rotating clockwise. The curve of the veins does not seem to catch the water as it rotates. 
this is actually the key idea in the design. Catching the water would tend to keep it in the pump, while the goal of the shape is to get the water moving faster or accelerate it, converting the rotating energy of the pump into kinetic energy of the water. A better pump accomplishes this, and more efficiently, uh, the, inner, the better the pump accomplishes this, the more efficiently the energy conversion. Keep these ideas in mind when you're designing your impeller. Impeller design is a key part of the whole pump design process, and it can be taken in isolation. But here are a few examples of impellers that provide an apparent range of complexity. Not all of these apply to our pump configuration. And selecting a design that will work in our situation it will take some thought. Uh, these images might make more sense if you consider where the entering water makes contact with the pump and how it would be moved if the impeller were rotating. So think about some of these ideas as you're trying to modify the original impeller design for our fountain pumps. We will be using both vernier calipers and digital calipers and we meet up in class to work on drawing our new impellers for the fountain pumps. The image on the right is our um, fountain pump impeller. It includes the ceramic magnet that uh, is a part of the rotating portion of the electric motor and the impeller blades that move the water. The image on the left is a diagram of how the vernier calipers worked. We worked with these a little bit uh, during our beam activity, but you should review how to use the calipers, the vernier calipers, and we'll compare their ease of use and accuracy with those of digital calipers we'll also have in the classroom. We'll be drawing our fountain pump impellers so that we can use them in the pump itself during testing. On the left shown here is our small fountain pump uh, shown disassembled. Uh, the top image on the left shows the impeller installed inside the volume of the pump housing and motor. Uh, the lower one shows it removed. Uh, the enlarged images of the original impeller is shown in the middle image and the right hand image is essentially what we'll be working on students recreating. The gold portion of the impeller shown on the right is really uh, not required. That's a replica of the original. You can design a new impeller uh, using some of the ideas uh, that we've discussed so far and thinking about how the fluid might go through the pump uh, and how you might improve that flow. So uh, make sure and take a chance to uh, practice with SketchUp or if you're using another program that you already have experience with, that's great. Uh, we will need to be able to export an STL file in order to get it to work properly. So bring your laptop to class and uh, we'll help uh, work through some of these measurements and drawings. Understanding geometric dimensioning and tolerancing can make a big difference in the final quality and function of engineering designs. Communicating the size and shape of a product or part is just the beginning. If that part is an element of another larger system or otherwise connected to other parts that influence overall performance, then the accuracy and precision of the manufactured element can make a big difference. The image shown here demonstrates a few key ideas in communicating details of a final product. This is a plate with a hole position near its center. The plans of reference are shown in the block A and B, excuse me, planes of reference are shown as uh, A and B. All the measurements should be taken from those edges when locating the center of this hole. The nominal or expected dimensions are also shown, um, the dimension 5 off one edge and 10 off of another, um, and then and down on the lower portion, the position tolerance is shown with the reference planes also identified. In this case, the position tolerance uh, is 0 0.02. Um, an example of why geometric dimensioning and tolerancing becomes important, along the bottom of the page here, we see seven holes. And if we think of drilling those holes, 
there's a couple different ways that we could accomplish that. Uh, we could drill the first hole and then measure to the next hole and drill it and then measure to the next hole and drill it and repeating that process measuring from between the next hole to the following hole. However, if you drill the first hole, measure the locations of all the holes and then drill them, you avoid the opportunity to combine errors. If you make an error in the first hole and then repeat that error in measuring between the first the first hole and the second hole and repeat that error again from the second hole to the third hole, you get uh, an uh, error that continues to increase. So these that's just one of the reasons that geometric dimension and tolerancing is important, understanding how best to complete design so that you get the final product you want when sent out for manufacturing. Some students have had the chance to work with 3D printing. It's becoming much more um, uh, readily available and the costs of doing so are coming way down. We've inserted a pro programming section uh, in between our impeller designs and our pump testing. Uh, this will allow us time to complete the 3D printing, uh, allow us to check and uh, possibly reprint if your designs uh, have errors or a change that you feel you need to make before testing. Our system is a Stratasys U-Print system. Um, it has a working space of 8 inches by 6 inches by 6 inches. It prints off in an ABS plastic that has an off-white color and it also uses a soluble material, a support material for objects that are uh, elevated in the space. Each student will design an impeller uh, to be printed during our testing um, and printing will require that the drawing be exported to an STL file um, needed by our printer. Uh, students should make sure that they have drawing program that has this ability if you're using something other than SketchUp's Make. We have outlined the process for adding a plug-in uh, to SketchUp Make uh, for this purpose. Um, the SketchUp Make Beginners um, Make sure and watch the YouTube tutorials uh, that are available. Also, uh, we have posted a general example video for drawing the impeller in SketchUp Make. It includes specific measurements for the drawing and a modified version of the original impeller. 3D printing allows uh, rapid prototyping to ideas to be manipulated sooner and with reasonable costs. In some cases, functional tests can be performed on the parts. Uh, the final design support, the model can be used to repair molds and other production materials. Um, and of course, this is a additive manufacturing technique that has blossomed and it will continue to be used in a much wider fashion across many industries. All right, that brings us to the end of our quick overview of things that we'll be doing this week and the, a few ideas about pumps. Uh, a separate video will discuss the topics and concepts, uh, the mathematics and science that we'll be applying in this portion of our work.